Hi everyone, hope you're doing well and welcome to another video and this is a particularly special one because we've got another version of our software, brand new, which we've just released. It's in early access though so you will need to obviously be supporting our development fund to get hold of it and I'm going to jump into showing you all of that right now but just before I do that, this computer which you see next to me right here uh, we're saying a huge thanks to M-Wave Australia who are basically sponsoring um, some of our project by giving us access to hardware. So we built this computer. Um, there'll be a link in the description below to that video if you want to go watch that of us actually building it. But this is really important because there would not be optic support without this machine because it has an RTX 2070 card in it. So, you know, big shout out to them because this whole thing wouldn't be possible without that better kit. Okay, so new software. Let's go. Let's go have a look at it. We're currently supporting up to Blender 2.90. 2.90? Yeah. So Blender 2.90 is the currently supported official build. 2.91 will need a fix. So there'll be a new version of software coming for that. I'm just going to quickly go through the highlights of version 0.2.8. So if you've got an account, you log in, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see 0.2.8. It's now ready and available. Um, we're also going to be making 0.2.4 as of the end of today, so probably before this video is released, this will be changed. So the publicly available build will go to 024. So I'm going to our development fund page just to let you know what's up with this. So version 0.2.4 is going to be released publicly, so it should be available, and then 025 will be moved to this slot. So when we reach $1,100 funding, then 025 will be released and so on and so forth. So if you guys want to keep making the software more available to people with more features, then subscribing is the best way you can do that. And it also helps us because all of the funding we get past here basically goes to paying for development, which is really helpful. Anyway, that's my shilling out the way. Let's get back to what 0.2.8 is about. So I've already said optic support. I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. But the main head headlines for this is basically we now support the optics rendering device and there's a whole bunch of fixes. So the first thing I guess I should show you is it's actually working. So we're going to just jump into Blender real quick. I've got the other computer, which you can see here, already ready to go. There it is, Ryzen Ninja. So I'm going to connect to it and just show you optics working, what it looks like. You can now select optics like that. And we're going to just render default cube really quickly just to show you working. And then we'll do a quick benchmark. All right, here we go. So this is it. This is optics. And it's way quick, like this three seconds. Let's do something that's a little bit more intensive. So we will open up a good old Blender BMW benchmark. And real quick, we'll just do, okay, there it is, synced. We'll turn off this computer because this computer is terrible. Um, we'll not go with CPU. First, we'll do CUDA. And then we'll do a CPU render, not a CPU, Blech. what am I talking about? <laughs> we'll do an optics render instead. Blech. Gotta get my nomenclature sorted out. Okay, so there we've got the CUDA, and then we will just change to a different slot. And we will also change the render device that we're using. Let's go with optics. And you can tell they're different, this one says optics. And this one just says CUDA. So the optics is at the end, because for some reason they both start with CUDA. I guess this is just the way that Blender names things, because we get all the names by just asking Blender what devices it's got, and then it tells us, this is the device I've got, that's what it names it. Um, but that's the way to tell, you look at the end. And we're going to render with optics. So last time it took us about 36 seconds, but using optics, we get a time of about 23 seconds. All right, so 36 seconds for CUDA and 25 seconds for optics. So there you go. That's optics support in CrowdRender now. So you can use all of your new 3000 series cards and obviously 2000 series cards if you bought them and hopefully get a decent amount of speed benefit using the optics device if you so desire. Okay, some of the other things that we'll go through. We've moved the ports which CrowdRender uses to communicate. Now, if you don't know what ports are, don't panic. They're kind of like channels on a television. And we've decided to move where we actually use those channels for CrowdVendor. Before version 028 was out, some of the ports that we were using were actually officially registered on, I think it's IANA's website. 
as being belonging to other services. So we decide to move into a range which isn't registered so that we're not going to clash with those services and it's going to hopefully cause less issues that way. The only way this might affect you is if you've got some custom routing, routing, custom filtering rules in either your router or your firewalls, then you probably have to change this when you move to version 028. Also, version 028 needs to be installed on every machine. You cannot mix and match. We have modified CrowdRender to manage missing attributes. And what that means is if you've put custom properties into your scene, before they would just confuse our system and you'd get very persistent, very difficult to solve sync fails where the render nodes would just say sync fail next. This is mainly to deal with either you putting custom properties in to your blend file or an add-on that does that. And if you don't have the add-on installed on every node, then it wouldn't work. Right, let's talk about bugs. So there have been a, quite a few bug fixes for version 0.2.8. First one I'll talk about is we have a certain number of background processes which need to be there in order for our software to work. Unfortunately, it seems that they were multiplying out of control. So you can see here we've got one, two, three. This is how it should be if you're working on a client or a master. If you're looking at debugging, perhaps, let's just say a render node, you could have a different number. If you're using headless mode, you'd probably have maybe two, possibly three if you're rendering. If you're using a render node, but you've used foreground, a foreground process like this to start it up, then you'd have three, possibly a fourth one, which is used for the computer that's trying to use that machine to render, and possibly a fifth one if it is actually rendering, because we use separate processes for different tasks. However, they shouldn't just keep multiplying and building up. So this particular issue we had was we noticed people were complaining about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten processes just continually multiplying out of control. So we fixed that and you can read a little bit more about that here so it doesn't do that anymore. We also fix an issue with fluid simulation. We had a problem where if you had a fluid simulation in Blender, if you double clicked on that blend file to open it, we would get an issue where those background services I just talked about, one of them would just die and it would render the, serve, the, the whole system just inoperable. So we fixed that as well. It's now compatible with um, all of the fluid simulation software that was added to so all the Mantaflow stuff. It's now compatible with that and should work if you do have a fluid sim in your scene. This was an issue with Windows where I'll demonstrate this. Let's just say you've typed in Ryzen Ninja when you hit this little button, you should automatically get the IP address, which is what that number is called, show up. It's supposed to be resolved automatically. Now this sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes you have to key it in manually, but we had a bug where, particularly on Windows, sometimes it would resolve the address, so it would actually show an address that was wrong. So we fixed that. You won't get bogus addresses anymore. It was also very hard to get rid of that bogus address as well, so we've made an improvement there. Next up on the list, this was a pretty huge one actually, and it makes the system really, really a lot more stable. I'm not going to say it's absolutely stable, but it's a lot more stable. So we had a problem where if you did anything that took a very long time, file transfers was the main issue, but rendering anything that could take a long time to complete, then the system would just seize after that process had completed. So if you're uploading a file for a very long time, once you've finished it would just seem like the system freezes. Or if you were rendering, for example, if you rendered like, for example, in ArcViz, architectural visualizations who do very long single frame renders because they want to get low noise. After the frame had rendered successfully, it wouldn't be downloaded. The system would just stop. So we fixed that. That was a pretty huge overhaul, but it's now way more reliable. I can actually leave it running. I can set up a session, leave it running and come back three or four hours later and the system is still responding and it's not seized. So thumbs up for that. That makes a huge difference for anyone that's got really long render times or really big files that take a long time to upload, uh, particularly if you're going to use our cloud rendering service as well, which was where a lot of issues came with the big uploads. Another problem that we fixed that was related to this was if you have, let's just say, if I demonstrate here, if you had, let's just say, one, two, three computers and you decided I'm going to connect this one and then you let it connect and then I'm going to connect this one and then you let it connect and then you're going to connect this one. If you were to connect sequentially like that, you would find that only the last one in the list would actually complete. 
and the first two would sync fail. So we had a bug in our code that would cause this problem. And what would happen is when we make a transfer to another computer, we first save a copy of your file. It turns out we were just using the same copy of the file, but overwriting it, which means only the last node that you set connect to in that list would get a good copy. The other connections, the file that they were using would get overwritten. And of course that caused that file to be corrupt. Each transfer now gets its own pristine copy, but then that copy is temporary, which is another thing we fixed. One of the issues that you might've noticed is there's a lot of temporary garbage files that sometimes get left behind in your project directories. This no longer happens. Now these are related to that other bug I just talked about where we need to make a copy of your blend file in order to transfer it without it being corrupted by you hitting the save button. So this is what that copy would look like. These copies no longer actually turn up in these locations and they are actually temporary, which means as soon as you close Blender, they're actually all destroyed. And the last thing is auto pack. So we found a bug where if you selected to auto pack all your files into the blend file, and a lot of times you do this because you're gonna be moving the project somewhere else or you're using a render farm and you want to pack all the textures and everything that you want to use in the rendering into the blend file and send it to a render farm. So this is very related to you know what our software does. It turns out that there was an issue where if you had auto pack selected and saved your file that way, if, the, if any of the files were not actually properly packed into the blend file, i.e. they were missing, and they were not also available anymore on your client machine or on the render node, then it would cause a bug which would just cause our processes to die. So that's been fixed now. So hooray, AutoPack works, which is good. You'll, you'll enjoy that. You'll enjoy our software a lot more now that it works. So those are all of the enhancements and features we put into version 0.2.8. If you're using our software and you're getting some good value out of it and it's helping you do your stuff, consider supporting what we do. So we've got this development fund set up. It's very much the same idea as Blender's development fund. And so far you guys are helping with that. We've got over $1,000 a month now, which is super helpful. That's coming from about nearly 200 supporters, which for a small fry project like us, is pretty cool. Obviously, we want to get to the point where we can employ you know, about five or six people full time. So we've got a long way to go and you guys can really help with that. So we'd really appreciate it if you guys could at least go and check out the page, maybe give us some feedback. Also, we've added some new stuff to this page so you can now actually get hard surface. So that's the training by AD Burrows and Gleb Alexandrov. You can get that and subscribe for a whole year for $75. There are also bigger tiers if you want to make a bigger contribution, but you can get some training and some advanced early access builds, builds and also support this project. So a lot of good stuff happening. And that brings us to the end of our welcome to version 0.2.8 video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. We really appreciate that. We'd also appreciate, you know, like a thumbs up or subscribe or sharing this video around if you think that, you know, our software is useful and what we do is useful. So yeah, thanks. Ciao everybody, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next one. All the best.